If you've lived abroad long enough, you've surely come up against periods of frustration and struggle when you just don't feel at peace with your situation in life. And that's a life experience we all go through. You certainly do not have to live abroad to struggle. But those of us who do live abroad long term have unique challenges. And if you find yourself in one of these down periods at the moment where nothing seems to be falling into place and you're stressing about not adapting the way you feel like everyone else seemingly is, you are not alone. Uh, for me, there's been one mindset shift that I found freeing and I hope you do as well. And I'm going to share it with you today in this video. So first, if you're new here, welcome. My name is Diane. I'm the American behind this channel and also the We in France Living Abroad Lifestyle blog that I've linked below. But um, before I get into it, I want to mention a few housekeeping things. So if you want to jump right into the video, skip ahead to this timestamp. All right, so first, thank you to everyone who has bought my merch. I usually wear a piece in uh, most of my videos and it's a great way to support my channel. I really appreciate that and it's linked down below. And if you're on social media, I would love for you to tag your photos on Instagram. Tag me at We in France. Uh, I would love to reshare. And also thank you so much to those of you who took the time to send me a holiday card. It, um, it really brightened this time of year for me. So I just wanted to say thank you. Also, I'd love to let you know I have a newsletter that I send out about once a month and with the sign up, you get a freebie PDF that looks like this, all about the do's and don'ts uh, of what to do in France. And also, last thing, I want to do a new segment at the end of my video called um, Things I Love. It'll feature maybe something I bought, something I've seen, a quote, and the first one at the end of this video is going to be about three handmade things that I've received from small businesses over the holiday season, something I bought from an American shop on Etsy, uh, a French creator, and also someone in Kuwait. So stay tuned for that. And as always, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, hit the thumbs up, hit the subscribe, and turn on that bell so you don't miss any of my content. All right, now let's get into it. Okay, let me open up with this question. If you live abroad, have you ever felt like an outsider who's doing everything abroad wrong? Well, maybe that's not thriving at work. You feel like you're not making enough friends, you're not speaking the language perfectly, and you certainly aren't loving it as much as you thought you would. Maybe you miss things from home and you, you often find yourself annoyed at the way things are being done in your new country. Does that sound familiar? Above all, you just don't feel like yourself and that's the worst. And these feelings are intensified when you have a bunch of other life stresses coming at you from all directions that have nothing to do with your life abroad. Does any of that sound familiar? I hope not, but I have a feeling it might because it's something we all go through. And for me, since moving to France in 2012, I've had a ton of ups and downs like we all do. And I feel like this is a topic that a lot of people shy away from because it's so much easier to just show the Instagram worthy side of life abroad and talk about the good parts and what it's like living the dream, you know, um, because that's easy. It's comfortable. And I think it's great. Uh, you know, I do show the positives often because there are a lot of them. Let me say that up front. There are so many good parts about living abroad and I would never regret it for a second, but you know, it's also real life. It's certainly not a permanent vacation living in France. And I'd be doing you a disservice if we also didn't talk about some of the more difficult aspects of living abroad. So I hope this video is validating for you. And I know personally, I've been hesitant to speak up when I'm having a hard time because I don't want to burden people in my life. So not even on YouTube or the blog. I mean, people that know me in real life and even worse, people think people that just don't get it. You know, they think, oh, you live in France, you live abroad, your life is perfect. You must be rich. You must be this or that. And if you're struggling with anything, people can almost make you feel guilty about it. Like you're doing the living abroad thing wrong. You know, I'll have a whole video on that actually. Um, and then you get these unhelpful comments like, oh yeah, I'm sure it's hard. You live in France. How hard can it be? As if France is this magical place that makes all of life's problems, poof, disappear. You know, spoiler alert, it's not. Um, or the worst is like, oh, well, if you don't like this thing or you don't like that thing, well, go home. Just, that's not helpful. That's not what people need. So anyway, a couple of years ago, a family member had some health challenges that were really hard for our family. And if you combine that with job changes, uh, financial stress, just everything else going on in life, you have a recipe for a bit of a meltdown. And then, you know, you add in the fact that you live far away from everything that was comfortable and normal. And then the reality that you live in a world <laughs> where you speak a foreign language and a foreign land, it can just be too much to handle. And then you can lose sight of what makes you, you. 
And all of that doesn't put you in the best position to overcome whatever challenges you're facing. Like if you can't even deal with regular life stress building up, how the heck are you supposed to get a handle on a foreign language, on a culture that you don't know? It's just too much. So anyway, for me, most of the stress from that period is in the rear view mirror, but you know, there's still stress. And this whole topic kind of got me thinking about the challenges of living abroad on a deeper level. And that's why I wanted to talk about it. And this is what I kept coming back to. So for me, I firmly believe this. It is essential to be who you are and carry that with you no matter where you're from, no matter where you find yourself living in the world. First and foremost, you have to be you. And what I mean is this, in times of a struggle, if you can't be 100% who you are and how you think, act, react, feel, the hard periods abroad will be even more difficult because you'll be trying to be something you're not or someone you're not and pushing against something instead of finding your place kind of within this new, within this new life. So living abroad is a process that's made infinitely more difficult if you're trying to live your life personally by someone else's standards. So yes, when everything is new and different, the first couple of years, go out and be amazed, discover your new surroundings. And of course, experience all France has to offer to the fullest. Travel, you know, do the French things. I have, I love many of them. Befriend French people, get to know people. I was gonna say get to know your neighbors, but that hasn't worked out for me. <laughs> um, indulge in all things French, you know, take part in things that you love that work for you and leave behind the parts that don't mesh with who you are. That's fine, you know. If you think all French people, for example, all shop at farmer's markets and cook elaborate meals from scratch and that, oh, to fit in, you have to do these things. Even if you personally hate cooking and you don't have time to spend hours a day on food, that's gonna make you miserable. You can do things your way, you know. French people, they don't act any one way. They're not all the same. Uh, that was just a simple example, but you get what I mean, right? And this next part's really important, and this was the mental shift for me after a couple years of living here that I found incredibly freeing, and I hope that it can help you. So here it goes. I came to France thinking I had to learn everything about France. French people, French culture, way of life, and then do my best to emulate that. And if I couldn't do that, then I was failing. I would never thrive. I would never enjoy my life here. Like I had to up my game, speak great French, know everything, and basically pretend to be French or my best version of a French person in order to adapt and integrate. And it was so misguided, right? But if you do a Google search, there are so many articles that make French people seem intimidating. Like, you know, we have to bring our A game to, uh, to impress these little fancy unicorns, you know, like a different race of people. Um, and abide by their rules. And it's exhausting. It's not like that. You know, I, embarrassingly, I thought I had to dim my spirit and dim what makes me Diane in favor of acting French. And what I didn't realize is that in doing so, you chip away at who you are and then you're not at your best to deal with things when life gets hard. And that's exactly what happened to me. Um, I learned that you can honor and respect French customs and culture. Of course, I encourage that. But do it in your own way and be all the happier for it if certain things aren't working for you. So once I made that shift and allowed myself to express my personality in everyday life, do the things I enjoyed, don't do the things I didn't enjoy, somehow life challenges that came my way that had nothing to do with living abroad seemed so much more manageable when I wasn't trying to be anyone else, you know? And you know, you don't have to do everything like the French if it doesn't make you happy. Of course, don't be disrespectful or do anything illegal, but I'm talking about little things, especially in your own home and the way you go about life. Do what works for you and, and don't, don't force yourself to act French because guess what? You aren't French. You're never gonna be uh, a native born French person and that's okay. It's beautiful uh, and it's normal. So that's what I wanted to say here. And, for me, living abroad can sometimes feel like I've lost a part of my identity or that I've had to reinvent myself. And that's okay. You know, the most important thing is that we do what we need to do to keep ourselves grounded and connected with what makes us happy and the people that make us happy. So don't force yourself into someone else's timeline of when you should be at ease with the language or the culture or when you should get that promotion at work or when you should buy a house or have a kid. Timelines don't do anything but add stress to an already frazzled mind. I firmly believe that. And we need to give ourselves the space and grace to know what we need and then pursue it. And this applies to so much more than just living abroad, right? Um, but it's a lesson I learned. I don't wanna say I learned it the hard way, but it took me time to learn it. And another one is that I know I need to stop saying should 
Uh, and I think it's really self-defeating to say, oh, we should test at this level. We should understand everything on TV by this point. We should go travel and see this many countries by a certain date. Shoulds suck. They make us feel like we failed at things that don't have timelines, that shouldn't have timelines. And if we try to control everything, we pretty much control nothing and we won't get to where we want to go. So all that's to say, if you're abroad or you're in a situation where you're not happy and you're questioning your choices and you're being hard on yourself, my advice is to just let yourself be. Let all that crap go. Detach from the stories we tell ourselves that serve nothing but our anxiety. You're doing fine. I think as humans, especially ones who live abroad and see our new homelands as shiny and new and a place in which to better ourselves and see and do so much, it's so easy to see what we want for ourselves and others, especially when on social media. So people post their highlight reels there, right? It's not real life. And in doing so and looking at other people, we ignore everything that we already have within us that's good, that's positive. And for example, like maybe we seek to be more fashionable, better traveled, uh, a better parent, a better student, daughter, whatever, have more money in the bank. And we just want more when maybe what we already have is more than enough. And we just need to tweak it a little bit or re-examine it without looking to the left and the right and finding what we want in other people. So don't lose yourself trying to be more like someone else if it's clearly not serving you or at all, if I have a say in it. There's really no value in playing dress up with your life. Do what gets you inspired and excited about life and the rest will fall into place. And that's really good. It feels so good no matter where you live. And just know if you're having a hard time with life abroad, you're not alone. I'll say that again. You will figure things out even if it doesn't feel like it right now. Things will get better. And that's really all I wanted to tell you today. So if you could relate to this, talk to me below. And now for my new segment of things I love. Um, personally, some of the coolest things I found uh, are from other bloggers and people on social media, just recommendations from people I don't know in real life. So just an FYI, this is not sponsored. So these are things that I bought. But um, yeah, I was just thinking about what I could do as a segment uh, at the end of my videos, um, just because I kind of like that stuff when I see other people do it. So I figure I'd try it with things in my daily life that I'd like to talk to you about, either a quick segment on a TV show, a quote that was meaningful, uh, really anything, I'm leaving it wide open that falls into the category of something I love. So, but with that, keep on watching here. Let me show you three items I purchased or were gifted to me from a family member over the holiday season from small businesses. So it's two things from a French creator. Her name is Melanie Clenet, or in French, Mélanie Clenet. And I don't know if this will focus, I'll get a close up that I'll put in, but she does this really awesome technique with rope that is then threaded with beautifully colorful or sparkly thread. And she makes these beautiful designs, um, like a catch-all, a little tray. This could be for a plant. You could put a little cactus succulent in here, um, or even just use it to hold coins or something. This is gonna go on my, on my nightstand, my bedside table. And I was blown away when I first saw her work at a uh, eco-friendly boutique in Dinar, I believe it was, um, a few hours from where I live. And I, I noted her stuff and I asked for a few things for Christmas. So uh... the second is a hair clip I found on Etsy. And first of all, this American creator's packaging, um, the name is Fena and Faye. The packaging was just amazing. The box that it came in, everything's printed on it. And these are beautiful, eco-friendly, handmade, plant-based, nickel-free hair clips um, that are sustainable, sustainably made. Um, she has a whole shop of hair clips, some jewelry, um, really high-end, strong hair clips. If you have really long hair or thick hair, these aren't little dinky clips. And I was just blown away by the attention to detail and the packaging and um, yeah, just beautiful. So if you're into hair accessories and that sort of thing, check out Fena and Faye. Again, it's a shop on Etsy. Everything's linked below. But I was looking for something on Kickstarter and I came across a seller in Kuwait. And this piece just spoke to me and I bought it for myself, a little bit of a splurge for my birthday. Metal bowls that are made of semi-precious metals. This is heavy. I think it's absolutely beautiful. The video is not gonna be doing it justice. This is nickel and copper uh, made through a really interesting process. Um, it's a sand casted bowl. So you'll have to look at the link below to get more information. I fell in love with the process. I just saw this. And I said, wow, it's speaking to me. I just feel so inspired by it. And this, and this is gonna go on my shelf in my office. 
I don't know. I just feel an energy from it. I feel it's so beautiful to look at. It's beautifully not beautiful in a way. It's they're all unique, and she has a bunch with brass, copper, nickel, and um, it just is amazing. So yeah, it could be a decorative piece, uh, kind of a sculpture, and yeah, that's that. So anyway. That's my new segment, Things I Love. Let me know if you have any ideas for it or what you would like to see, what kinds of things. Um, and check out those creators below because it's always been important to me to support small businesses. Uh, so do that. And as always, thank you so much for being here, everyone. If you got anything out of this video, it would mean everything to me if you shared it with a friend or family member who might get something out of it as well. Or one of my other videos, if you're into more lighthearted stuff, I've done tours at the pharmacy, uh, behind the scenes at a bakery, a three-part series, also a chocolate shop. So check all of that out. I would love for you to hit the bell notification, hit the thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. And I will see you right back here on We in France soon. Take care and salut!